Hello, I'm Luke Ross from MixingLight.com and welcome to the fifth insight in our beginner baselight video series. In today's insight, we're going to be talking about the Flux Manage browser. That's how we interface with our media clips predominantly within Baselight. And we're also going to be mentioning very briefly um, some three-point editing techniques and using the EDL import window to import media. But definitely the focus of this insight is going to be on the Flux Manage browser tool and how we sort of operate that and some tips and tricks around using it efficiently. I'm just going to hide the job manager with Control J. The main point of discussion for today will be the Flux Manage view. So let's just go ahead and bring that up now. Okay, so this is our Flux Manager. The Flux Manage tool allows you to navigate through your macOS file system and import media directly from your file system into the Baselight scene. So I'm gonna go ahead and navigate now through my file system, through my RAID. You see I've got a proxies folder here with some media thumbnails. As I navigate through these folders on my file system, I can click on the path at the top of the Flux Manager. So this can be a nice way to jump back, especially if you're delving into lots of folders and you've got a very long file path. This is a great quick navigation technique. You can see for each column, we have a filter menu and a refresh button. So for example, if I wanted to filter within my Mixing Light Media folder, I'll go up to this column, hit filter and type in proxies and you can see I've filtered out four items just to leave the proxies folder. I'll go ahead and toggle the filter off by tapping the F. Also if you've added media and it's not showing up here you can go ahead and hit the refresh button. To the right of our path we have a bookmark menu. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the proxies folder and just create a bookmark and you can see that now if I click down on this menu we have our bookmark available. It's grayed out because we are currently resting on the folder but if I was somewhere else now I can navigate straight to the bookmarked folder by just clicking straight on our bookmark here. We have some sorting options here and we can also create a new folder at any time uh, which will create a folder on our Mac OS system. I'll just go ahead and hide the filtering tags here at the moment. And you can see that we've got over here on our far right hand side a quite useful menu. We're currently looking at the left pane of the Flux Manage view but the Flux Manager actually has two separate panes which you can see here might just go ahead and make this GUI a little bigger. So you can see here we've got sort of two sides to this Flux Manager. So on the left hand side I've got my proxies folder open. So on the right pane of Flux Manage I'm going to go and access my bookmark. So we're looking at the same folder. And I might go ahead and open up the red camera originals for this film. So now we have the proxies folder open on the left hand side and the raw camera files open on the right. So what's the purpose of this view? Well you can imagine the two sides of the Flux Manage sort of like two open finder windows on the Mac. So what I can do, now I've got these two open, I can drag and drop directly, I'm just going to hit OK. Down here in the operation history, you can see the status of your transfer. So you can see that this failed, this probably failed due to a permissions issue. But that's OK, we didn't actually want to copy the proxies to mix with the camera raw, so we'll just leave that for now. I can go ahead and clear that by just clicking this red line. And we're going to go ahead and hide this right hand pane by enabling left hand pane only. You can preview these clips by clicking and scrubbing from the top left hand corner to the right top hand corner and that'll scrub through our clips on the image display. If I click and drag from the middle it'll try and move it and if you see if I hold it for long enough it'll allow me to actually do some other funky things but we'll, we won't get into this too much. Uh, the interface can be quite confusing if we go into all of the nooks and crannies so we're not going to go there for now. You can see if we click on clips it'll show us um, a little bit of a metadata breakdown including the size, frame length, uh, the codec and color space. Really useful pertinent information is displayed up here on the top right hand corner. So that's a really good place to look if you're a little bit confused about what your clips might be. If you're not a fan of the thumbnail view you can change that to the list view which again shows some really relevant metadata um, in these columns. If I wanted to add or tweak the metadata that's showed on these columns, I can go ahead and hit the toggle columns disclosure triangle and I can add or remove any metadata that I think is relevant. On the thumbnail view, you can also go ahead and hit the thumbnail metadata drop down triangle, which will allow you to add additional information onto your thumbnails, which may or may not be helpful. And also quite a useful trick, you can change it from the poster frame which is, I think, from memory, the middle frame, to the start and end frames, uh, which may give you a more uh, true indication of what the shot looks like, depending on the shot. For now, I'm just going to leave that back at poster frames. 
If I want to filter my clips, I can do that here with the filter menu. So for example, say I filter by the text bedroom and hit filter. You'll see that it'll create a new filter tab for me up the top. This browser one is a separate browser tab. I can rename this to whatever I like. Um, but when you filter, it'll create a separate filter tab where it describes the filter. Now you can add to these filters in a quite a complex way by going into this metadata tile area. So for example, I could go ahead and add resolution to my filter search. So by dragging the resolution metadata tile onto the end, I can go ahead and specify some resolution. And now it's added this additional metadata tag onto my filter. So you can get quite complex here. And again, we won't delve into it in too much detail, but just know that filtering options are there. I'm gonna go ahead and close my filter tab. So there's only three more things I wanna quickly cover in this view. Down the bottom left, there's a rule editor. This is an advanced workflow feature, so we won't get into this for now, but there is a sequence parameters tab here that's quite important. When we go ahead and insert any of these clips, it'll use the sequence parameters to define the color space and input format for those clips. For example, color space, it has recognized from the metadata of this file that it is a rec 709 file. If I change this color space to something that was vastly incorrect, for example, ASUS AP0, you can see that that affects all the thumbnails and it looks pretty ghastly. Um, so if we go ahead and insert this now, it will have this color space tagged. So make sure that the color space and format are correct here while you're importing. You can also see that there's a frame rate option down here but I'm gonna go ahead and change this back to Rec 709. Lastly, I just wanna cover this bottom right-hand section. Okay, so my base light scene just crashed and I thought this would be a really great opportunity to talk to you about what happens when projects crash. So base light scenes have this amazing functionality where even if you open, save, and then close a scene, you can still undo to the point of creation. I can open up my save project and control Z all the way back to the beginning of my project. It's a really handy base light feature. So bearing that in mind, when base light has a critical error and closes, I've now got a little warning triangle associated with my scene. I'm gonna double click to open and you'll be presented with this dialog box saying, do you wish to recover or discard the autosave data? My advice to you is always recover the changes. If you discard it at this point, there's no way that you'll be able to get that information back. So I always like to recover changes. Okay, now let's open Flux Manage back up. Let me just navigate via my bookmark here. And we'll continue where we left off. So we were having a look at this bottom right hand panel where if we have preview enabled, we can click and drag with the slider and this will give us a running preview of our clip, very similar to clicking and dragging up the top left hand corner here. Also, we can mark an in and out point. So if we wanted this uh, frame 130 to be our in point, could go ahead and type in 130 and hit enter, which will now create a subsequence. So it'll insert it from frame 130 until its last frame, frame 209. So you can go ahead and modify that there. I'm just gonna reset this with the R and I'm gonna turn off preview. Now we are actually going to do it. I'm gonna go ahead and double click this first clip in our sequence. And it's gonna ask me whether I wanna change my scene's current scene container. We are gonna go ahead and change it to my RAID, which is where all of my media is living for this project and hit change container. And there you go. We can close Flux Manage with Control B, make this clip a little bigger in the timeline with Command, middle mouse button, drag up. And we have successfully imported our first media clip. When you insert media, I'm gonna go ahead and drag my cursor to the two second mark and open up the Flux browser with Control B. So I'm gonna go ahead and insert this second bathroom clip and you'll notice what happens. I'm gonna go ahead, close the browser. The second clip has inserted from my cursor position. So as we mentioned in the Baselight UI Insight, this is our cursor. And whenever we insert a new clip using this insert sequencer cursor button, it's gonna go wherever we have the cursor. So we might not want to insert exactly where the cursor is. So I'm gonna quickly show you how to do a three point edit I'm gonna hit Command Z to undo those. And I'm gonna go ahead and make a cut in the timeline with Command K and Command K. And I'm just gonna select this middle clip and delete. So the scenario that I'm mocking up is I want to insert a clip into this gap. This is a fairly common situation. So I'm gonna open up my Flux Manage. And if I wanted to insert this clip into the gap and I just click this button, you can see that there's a bit of overlap 
and it's not a precise edit. So I don't want that. I'm going to hit Command Z. What I want instead is I'm going to go ahead and in this Options drop down menu, I'm going to change it from Always Insert a Cursor to Use Timeline Marks Slash Gaps 3 Point Edit. Once I've changed this, you can see the text changes to Insert Sequence and Gap. And now if I double click or click on this button here, you can see we have a clean edit. The last scenario I'm going to give you is I'm going to delete this. If you wanted to do a more precise edit, what you can do is something that's called a three point edit. And the way to mark that up on baseline is you're going to hit shift left square bracket. This creates a yellow timeline mark in. I can go ahead and drag my cursor to my desired out point and hit shift right square bracket. Now regardless of where my cursor is, I could put my cursor way over here. I'm going to open up my Flux browser. Say that in this Bedroom 2 clip, I wanted to start at 10 frames in. So I'm going to go ahead, mark my 10 frames, and hit this button to create my subsequence. Now I'm going to insert sequence between marks. So I've got my timeline endpoint, my timeline out point, and my source endpoint. So this is a three-point edit. Insert sequence between marks. And there we go. So this is a more precise way of inserting media using the Flux Manage tool. Now, that is going to be the bulk of this video because we're not going to cover EDL imports uh, properly within this beginner series. But I just want to quickly show you the EDL import menu so you can have a bit of an idea where that is, especially if you have an EDL uh, that you want to have a play with. So I'm going to close the browser with Control-B. We're going to go up to our views. We're going to go ahead and click the Conform tool. Now, this is the Conform window. I'm going to make this a bit bigger. And you can see this is where you can select your AAF, XML, or EDL to import. I'm just going to quickly change this to conform all shots and timeline, just so you can see what this will look like when you import in an EDL. This menu will look very similar. When you're importing your EDL, you'll have the options to change your range type, what metadata you're matching your events to, and a lot more options. So again, just know that that's how you access this menu for now, and we'll cover this later in another series. Cool guys, and that's everything that we're gonna cover in today's Insight on Importing Media. We're gonna cover how to bring in a pre-conformed file and cut that up using the Scene Detect tool in the next Insight. Um, so that'll be a more practical example of how we actually get to grading within Baselight. But again, I hope that that was a overview of the Flux Manage tool. It's a very useful tool that you'll use all the time when you're using Baselight. I'll see you guys in the next Insight. Uh, for MixingLight.com, I'm Luke Ross.